Hello, everyone, and welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of Cloudera Evolve 24 here in New York City. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, alongside my co-host and analyst, Bob LaLiberté. We're in the final stretch. This is our last interview, but I have a feeling we saved the best for last. I think so, too. This is going to be a good one. This is going to be a good one. I would like to welcome Luz Erez. He is the CTO of MD Clone. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much for coming on. Yes, thank you very much for pronouncing MD Clone. <laughs> this is really hard, I know. So. For our viewers who are unfamiliar, tell us a little bit about MD Clone as well as your journey to be the chief technology officer there. Yeah, so I'm one of the founders, so I was born with a company. <laughs> so that's uh, company how- Company was born with you, Luz. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true as well, yeah. <laughs> Both of them are true. So we are in healthcare and I've been a lot of years in healthcare. My partner is a CEO, a Ziv. He is also many years in healthcare. And we've been in the interoperability field and we saw that there is a need for a product in the research field. And uh, we saw there are multiple problems, like there are a lot of data inside systems, healthcare systems, yeah. hundreds of thousands of tables and fields, and no one is doing nothing with the data. Yeah. Zitch, nothing. So why? What are the reasons? You, just, you see, you go to the doctor, he just type data, type, 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 and in the end, he asks you, what is your condition? You just type so much data. Why are you asking me? Everything in your computer say, yeah, it's too complex to read it from the computer. This is a problem. Right. So we looked at the problem. So there's a lot of data. It's very complex. And um, it's, it's, it's not organized in the right way. There's a problem with quality. And in the end, there's another small problem. There's a problem of PHI. The problem that... When I'm getting data, if inside there will be patient information, yep. it is not legal to get this. You need an IRB uh, in, in, in other places called Helsinki, but you need a committee to approve it to you. So you're not going to a committee because you have other things to do after your golf right. uh, session uh, this night. So that's a problem. So we went to solve this problem. And we saw that, first of all, we need big data infrastructure, but it need to be on-prem <laughs> because no one is going to take the medical data and put it an, on the cloud. So you need it to be on-prem. Huh. And not only you need it to be on-prem, you need it to be simple enough so the healthcare provider can install it and work with it. So we built the stack and we got to the point that we get the data, we clean it, we organize it in the right way. It's called longitudinal. This means it's based on events. Mm -hmm. And then you can ask very complex questions, but there was no query mechanism that can do it. <laughs> A clinical question looks like this. I want to know what medication people are looking while they have a relapse in their kidney disease and they are on a beta blocker. What is to be on a beta blocker? What is a relapse? Yeah. A relapse is the frequency changes of bad events. This is a relapse. <laughs> SQL does not know how to do this. So we needed to write a new database, data engine, that knows how to do this. Yeah. So we wrote a data engine that knows how to answer those questions. And then how do you solve the problem with PHI? So this was a hard one because you can anonymize, but anonymization is not enough. Yep. If I take your data and just remove some items, it's quite easy to see who you are. Right. In order to do this, we have to invent or build for ourselves something called synthetic data. Yep. Synthetic data, what it's doing is mixing patients. So there is no one-to-one -one relationship between the original data and the data that you get. Yep. In the end, it is PHI-free, but any statistics that you'll do in it will be almost always correct. The only thing will not be correct is outliers. Because outliers are special people and you threw away the outliers because you don't want to know about uh, special people or unique people. Everyone is special, sorry. I know it's not politically correct to say not special. But in the end, we've built this and now we are provisioning this platform. You don't need an IRB. You, can, you don't need to know programming. You ask a question, quite natural. Yep. You get data, it's synthetic, so you can bring it to someone else. Uh, think of one of our clients is the VA. Yep. So the typical client, patient, is not a typical person. Right. It's unique. The normal protocols in the literature do not fit them. 
how do they change the protocol? They need someone that work on this data, yeah. but they can't give the data outside because of PHI. So they write the query, they get the data in synthetic form, and then they can work with outside, like universities, research organizations, and so on. And uh, you, you, you can go to the top tier, uh, Chicago, McGill, those. Mm -hmm. They need to be co cooperative with other organizations. They are really the top tier. How do you do this without synthetic data? You can't take your data outside. Right. So this really enabler yep. for collaboration, for building models, and so on. And uh, so this is the, the main thing and reason why we are here today. So these are yeah. clients. Yeah, no, it's super important, right? And that ability to share that data universally across the healthcare space is something that's really needed. Mr. Mas because we are here today at the Cloudera event, <laughs> maybe you could talk a little bit about the role that Cloudera plays in enabling your, you know, you to be able to share the yeah. data, create the data, share the data, and get insights yeah. out of it. So, now this, this is the condition. Those are the conditions. Yep. We need to work on-prem because most organizations wouldn't just give to the cloud the data. First thing, second thing, there's a lot of data and you need a very high level of I.O. Yeah. You can't use indexes because the questions are too complex. So you need uh, scalability. You need a stack that will work for you for search, for, uh, for queues, for everything that you do. And you, so you can take open source for each one of them. But then if you have a problem and you have clients like we have, then you are stuck. You have to solve this. Yep. If you have any type of issue, it can be a problem in the, in the source, but it can be uh, a security breach in one of the component. You need to have someone to pick up the phone and call to. So just an example, we had log4j security breach. <laughs> if we weren't using Cloudera and we built our own stack from scratch, we will have to go each one of those components and make sure they are not, and then we have to reinstall for all our clients. It is a local installation, very heavy. We pick up to Cloudera, it's very good because we have a time gap between United States and, yeah. and Israel. And then at the next morning, we have an uh, installation package that we can deploy for our clients. It was one that was approved by Cloudera. So for a client like uh, we have DOD, we have uh, VA, those clients, they want to make sure, they be sure that someone, that you have a back. Yeah. And this is very important for a small company that deploy something very unique mm -hmm. and have enterprise level customers. If you don't have enterprise level, if you are uh, selling TikTok, there's no problem. So you, you would complain. If you have VA, if you have Chicago, those organizations mm -hmm. really needs, yes, it should work, work fine, but you need the backing of someone that will able to provision solution near real time to real problems, enterprise grade. And without Cloudera, this is something that couldn't be. In the beginning, we, s we have Horton Works and Cloudera. We selected Cloudera, but in the end, it's not really important, but mm. they converged to, to, to one entity, so it was fine with us. What role does AI play in helping to generate, and, and other um, LLMs play in helping to generate this synthetic data? Okay, so, our uh, traditional product use AI, but not generative AI, in order yep. to make the journey. Now we enter generative AI into it, I need it. <laughs> and we get new capabilities. The new capabilities that we got now is the ability to create synthetic data in order to train and in order to test okay. AI processes. So now we don't only supply it as a solution for PHI. Now we have a new magic tool, and this magic tool enable to validate that processes backed up by generative AI doing the correct job. So one of the biggest problems with generative AI is hallucination, 
And this is the biggest problem for, for the clients that want to work with it. Say, very nice as a co-pilot, it summarized Gmail and wonderful. Will it open the valve on this uh, mechanism correct? And you need really to test it. 95% is not good enough. 99 is not good enough. You need to make sure with 9.99999% and you need data. And how you can get data? Synthetic data is the solution. Is currently is recognized as the solution to get data for a specific job. Because without it, how do you get data for a specific scenario? Right. Give me uh, this special scenario. I don't have this patient. Okay, but I need to test all possible solutions. I need to, what will happen if you have a five-year-old kid with Alzheimer? Yeah. Oh, we never had it in the last three years. What will happen if you have it next year? Right. Okay, can you create? Yes, I can create synthetic person like this. And let's see if it handle right the, 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 the pipeline. So synthetic data become very important okay. for generative AI. And I think this is something that is really will be important, much more important than what we are doing today in the future. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, no, I think that, that makes a lot of sense. I think one of the things I wanted to ask about was you mentioned a lot of your data is on premises, but so much is stored in the cloud today as well. There's lots of data that's up there. How do you leverage Cloudera and its hybrid capabilities to help your clients? I'm sure if you're sharing data, that can't be on-prem. That's going to be yeah. somewhere else. So I wonder if you could touch yeah, upon the yeah. hybrid so, nature so of it. There are sometimes yeah. uh, that there are such needs, yeah. uh, especially, again, if you work with multiple organizations. Yeah. I give you two examples. In the COVID time, NIH used our platform in order to get data into the cloud from 60 different organizations, synthetic data into a, a single cloud solution. Uh, today we are using, we are doing for the FDA uh, devices data uh, consolidation. Uh, those needs, th those tools uh, needs to do not only processing data, but moving backward and forward processes as well, like yep. federated learning. Right. You don't want only to use to run data because sometimes to, 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 to get the data consolidated, this is very complex. Sometimes you only need to move the knowledge. So we call it uh, uh, weight metrics. Weight metrics are the holder of information and consolidated in one place. So we give these capabilities using hybrid. Usually when we speak about hybrid, this means okay. Having the data, it can be on private, on, on, on private cloud, public cloud, but usually it'll be real, on real prem, on real servers, yep. and moving it to a hybrid centralized solution that will gather the information from multiple sources. And we have a very good product today that, that does this, and FDA, yep. NIH, uh, there are multiple uses for, for this uh, because um, Do you that? there are so many use cases. Right. And uh, and many organizations are not are reluctant to share data. Yeah, like we are all saying, ah, oh, going sharing is very nice, but when you really get to the low level, so again, our capability of creating synthetic data and to conceal the source as well is very important because if you will ask a healthcare provider, I don't want to give names, but. Almost anyone, they wouldn't like to give the information that they lost. Well, because privacy, I mean, this is sensitive information. Yeah. And, it's not and only privacy, yeah. they don't want to know that their system is uh, is not the best. Uh, well, that's another reason I see. Be well, frank, in frank, it's not only PHI, it's more than PHI. I want to ask you, though, because you're talking about this reluctance to share data, too. Is that the biggest challenge that you're seeing when it comes to healthcare data analysis and management? If if it's not, what is it, and and what are the what are the solutions that MD Clone, at, with the help of Cloudera, are are yeah. So so on? again, Cloudera is our infrastructure. So everything I'm saying about MD Clone technically is done over Cloudera. Stuff. So <laughs> I can't speak about MD Clone without Cloudera. In the yeah. without it, we really have no capabilities at all. Right. So uh, yes, reluctant is issue, but. I can solve it, and really Cloudera can solve it. So what capabilities that we give is a, to conceal information about patients and origin of the organization. Uh, 
the biggest problem with healthcare is uh, the quality of the data. The quality is very poor. And there are two ways to do. One is to clean the data. This is very hard because second law of thermodynamics means something is bad. Right. Fix it very, very hard. But second way to do it is to do a lot of statistics and build statistical models over it. And usually this is, so you need to collect a lot of data. If you don't have enough data, you can't build proper statistical models and they will be very poor. So one of the biggest challenges is to get enough data, the right data, uh, and, uh, and in the end, enable to build the models that those models will make sense. I see all the time, three times a week, people that build models, write articles. I wouldn't like to be their patient. <laughs> the, uh, totally. Uh, so. I think you said it well. The r enough yep. data, the right data, and models that make sense. Liz Ares, thank you so much for coming on theCUBE. Thank Cube. you for having me. Thank really, you. Really, really fun you. and interesting conversation. Yes, thank you. I'm Rebecca Knight for Bob Liberté. Stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage of Cloudera Evolve 24. We will have our CUBE insights coming up right after a quick break. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in enterprise tech news and analysis.